there, welcome to today's episode of the Mojo Book Nook. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the largest ocean disasters in history, but from a little bit different perspective. Yes, I didn't even know about this until Dog yeah. Eat found out the book. Yeah, we're going to call this kind of a dog's eye view of the sinking of the Titanic. So today's book is called White Star, A Dog on the Titanic, and it's written by Marty Crisp. Now, this book was published in 2004 by Scholastic, and this is meant for about a grade six reading level or thereabouts. But the cool part about this book is there's a lot of historical facts in it. Absolutely, and in the back of the book, there are lists of people, there is a map of the deck layout of the Titanic, there's yes. a timeline, there are maps of the Titanic's route, there are, there's a lot of historical fact in here. The story itself centers around a 12-year-old boy named Sam and his dog, Star, who were on the Titanic. And why were they on the Titanic? This is one thing I didn't find out till Darlene was doing the research on the book, because see, Darlene was into all the ch Titanic chat. Tell them, tell them a little bit about all the stuff we already know I, about. Yeah, I did. Um, on the, t the television that I used to have, there was actually a Titanic channel. Yeah. So it was all Titanic all the time, every documentary, everything that you could possibly know, and I didn't know about this. But we're going to touch on something later on. But the reason why Sam and his dog were on the Titanic was... There was actually a dog show planned on the Titanic for the late afternoon, early evening of April 15th, which was actually the day that the Titanic sank. Isn't that a mind blower? So there were at least a dozen dogs yes. in kennels on the Titanic. Unfortunately, the majority of the dogs perished in the sinking. Three dogs survived, and we will talk about them. Yes, and the dogs that, that ended up going down with the ship, they were lucky enough that there was somebody, mm -hmm. and they don't know if it was actually a crew member or a passenger. They, they believe it was a passenger, yes. but again, who knows. But somebody did open the kennels and let the dogs out, so they had a chance. Yeah, they had a chance. Yeah. So let's get on with the book. Well, like I said, 12-year-old boy named Sam and his dog Star, which the Titanic was manufactured by the White Star line. Yes. The dog's name is Star. And the book's name is, is White, White Star. Star. So it all kind of ties together. So they're just, they're passengers. And they end up, they're rescued. And now the characters themselves, Sam and Star, are fictional characters. It is a novel. But they do mention a lot of the actual people that were rescued, a lot of the people that perished on the Titanic. There are actual names of survivors. Like it's, it's very historically accurate. And it was written when? It was written, it was published in 2004. 2004. Now the thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to get into the book more in a second now, there's a, there's a thing that came to light about six years ago after this book was published. And uh, it was a documentary on the yes. History Channel. They were looking at pictures of mm. the Titanic when it was coming in the dry dock and, mm. and then when it was in Belfast getting ready to go. And they discovered something very interesting that had sort of been covered up. Now it was reported mm -hmm. at the time before they even left dock. Yeah, but because was, they had to make the repairs. Yeah, yeah. but because they were so anxious to get underway for their maiden voyage, they were going to set speed records, they needed to get to New York on time. It was kind of covered up and swept under the rug and nobody really... Especially when the ship this. went down. Yeah, yeah, because and, it, was, it was preventable. And what it was, a gentleman who was doing research looking into photography saw this weird little black spot that had been repainted before it left Belfast. So he started doing a little bit of digging. And he found out there had been a coal fire which was already burning for almost a week and that of course after a while the temperature weakens the, the metal weakens the, the rivets. rivets and when they and wouldn't you know just a strike of luck yeah. no pun intended when the iceberg struck it hit the exact spot that was weakened by the coal fire yeah. that had been burning yeah. and it went right through the, and it went the, right through the rivets and just boop, boop, yeah, boop. Right through the side of the ship like Bye. a can opener. And down they went. And unfortunately, 1,500 people went down with it. Yeah. 
and dogs, which I never knew about. Yes, and that's what we're here to talk about today, are the dogs. So there were three dogs that were rescued. Yes, they, they were. They were all small dogs, and the reason that they were actually able to be rescued from the sinking was because they were in their staterooms with their owners. See, if you were a first-class passenger, and they were small dogs, they yes. were small breeds. They were little dogs, tuck them under your arm, take them with you. Put them, like people put them in a purse or whatever. Yeah. So we actually know about those dogs. Yes. So one was a Pomeranian named Lady, yes. and she was rescued from Lifeboat 7. That's right, because her owner. her owner wrapped her in a blanket and hit her. Yeah. The second one. The second one was a Pekingese named Sun Yat Sen. That's right. And that dog was rescued from Lifeboat 3. And the owners took that dog and kept it under a blanket until it was rescued by the Carpathia. Yeah, they, they hid the dog under a blanket. Nobody even knew she was there. No. Until they were rescued. That's right. And the third dog that was rescued was another Pomeranian. Now this Pomeranian, we don't know this dog's name, whether it was male or female. Because the people picked it up in Paris. That's yes. why. But this dog was owned by Martin and Elizabeth Rothschild, and this dog was rescued from Lifeboat 6. Yes. With Mrs. Rothschild. Yes. Mr. Rothschild, Martin went down with the ship. Yes. But then there's other ones, too. Yes, there are other dogs. Um, a couple of note that we know did not survive. They did not survive, unfortunately. There was a Great Dane, also unnamed in history, but this dog was owned by a lady named Anne Elizabeth Isham, and she refused to get on the boat or onto the lifeboat without her dog. Now, in this book, this dog is mentioned. Unfortunately, the facts were a little bit confused. A little bit confused. And they mention a Saint Bernard. But it was a great the Dane. The dog was actually a great Dane. And the, the, the most heart wrenching part about that story is, and it's a true story, is that they did find it. When the mm -hmm. boats went out after to find if there was any survivors and pick up. Deceased. When they found Miss Isham, yeah. she was she was dead, as was her Great Dane, but she still had her arms around her dog and was clinging to her dog even in death. Yeah. And the worst part is they say women and children first. Well, to most people, mm -hmm. their pets are their children. Yeah, absolutely. Now, another interesting dog story from the Titanic. Oh, and, this is a great one. Yeah, this is a great story because we don't... We can't determine really whether the story was true or not. No. Historians say, no, this dog did not exist. However, because of the circumstance, there's always a chance. There's now, possibility, yes. Because of, of, because exactly, of where that because person of, was on the yeah. ship. It totally makes sense. Mm. So now, go ahead. Now, First Officer William Murdoch on the Titanic had, or may not have had, a Newfoundland dog named Rigel. The original story, the legend of Rigel, was that he led Lifeboat 4 to safety, or he, he barked. barked. Well, there have been a couple of different yes, stories. Yes, that's right. So one was that he led them to safety. Another story was that he barked and attracted attention when they were rescued so that they found the lifeboat. Yeah, because the of the fog, because of Carpathia, yes. However, historians say that there's say no record. That there was, yeah, there was no record of a dog named Rigel. However... The records would list all of the dogs that were in the kennels, in the kennels or below. with the people mm -hmm. who had the dogs. But because this was a ship's officer, yeah. he would have had his dog in his cabin with him. There's no guarantee that this dog would have shown up anywhere on any ship's manifest. Well, yeah, because all they do is take the name of the actual person who is staff. Exactly. So, where did the stories of Rigel come from? They've got his name, they've got his breed, and there were two stories... And they're all the owner. Linking him to a rescue of one of the lifeboats. But because they don't have actual proof and historical records, because so much went down, mm -hmm. and, and like of you course, said, being all, that he was... Yeah. And of course, all of the survivors now are dead. Yeah. There's no way to verify for certain whether or not Rigel existed. I prefer to think that, yeah, Rigel was a real Well, model. I do as well. I do as well. And, but the cool part is... I didn't know any of this. I didn't know any of this until Darlene told me about the, a dog, a dog show. A dog show on the Titanic. I had no idea, but it totally makes sense. You've got the top of the top crops that are on this maiden voyage of the unsinkable ship. Why wouldn't they have? Exactly. Entertainment always happens on ships. Exactly. And 
the, all the first class passengers were stinking rich. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, look at some of them. Astor, John, John Jacob Astor. Astor, and his wife. You know, I mean, these, these were people. There were railroad, these... railroad magnates. Yes. There were bankers. There was the Rothschilds. There was the people who owned uh, the biggest apartment store over in, uh, I can't even think of the name of it, but I'll put it down in the link below. Too many big name people mm -hmm. who wanted to be on the ship because of the maiden voyage mm -hmm. of, and were invited to be on the ship for press reasons. So, I mean, people with that kind of money, if they they're gonna, if they're gonna have a dog, it's not gonna be a Heinz 57 that they picked up in the street. It's going to be a, a very expensive, very well-bred, papered, purebred dog. So, what better thing to do with their dogs than have a dog show on board the ship before they talk in New York? Right? That's right. Now here, the American Kennel Club. They wrote an article. This was back in April of April 8th of 2020. They're the ones that put all the information together. Now, some of the breeds of the dogs that were left in the kennels below, we're talking French Bulldogs, and we're talking uh, I, there was an Irish, Irish setter. setter breed. Like, really high breed, mm -hmm. but big breed dogs, and that's why you couldn't yeah. have Yeah, them. so the, the large breed dogs, like the Irish Setters the and the Dane, Great Dane, and they weren't upstairs in the cabins. No, they were down in the kennels. So, yeah, and like, like we said, the kennels were opened and the dogs got out because there are reports of the dogs running back and forth amongst the, the, amongst the calamity of people trying to get off the ship when they finally realized that, no, it's not a joke, we're going down and we need to get off this ship. And part of the thing that you got with your kennel service is your dogs would get walked on the decks every day by the staff. Yep. But you had to have the cash, and if you didn't have the cash, well... But nothing has ever, nothing has ever historically mentioned these dogs, mm -hmm. and I think I, I've I've been a dog owner. Mm -hmm. I loved my dog like one of my family, and I think these dogs deserve a mention. I think people need to know. I think these dogs deserve to have people know that they existed. Let's tell them about our rating system. So a good rating is out of five black cats, with five being the best, and a bad rating system, as you know, is out of hairballs, with five being the worst. Now, for historical accuracy, oh. which, yes, it's a novel, the story, the, some of the characters are true people, some of the main character and his dog are fictional characters, but giving the historical accuracy, the amount of research actually that went into this book, and it's not a large book by any means, however, a there's, a, there's a lot of information in here, and because it's aimed at a grade six reading level, you don't want to pack it with a lot of historical fact, but there's a lot of really great information in here, and I think that it's still important that kids know that this happened and that they understand that there's a, a cemetery at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean with 1,500 people buried in it. And if you're Canadian, it was just off the coast of Newfoundland exactly. because most of the survivors came where? Exactly. To Newfoundland. to Newfoundland. This is Canadian history, I've man. Been, I've been to the Maritime Museum in Halifax more than once. There is a huge Titanic display if you're ever down that way. Check it out. It's fantastic. But do they mention anything about the dogs? No. No. I have never heard previously to this about these dogs on the Titanic. So, what would you give this book? I would give this book four black cats. You know what? I'd say that too because you want to know why? This is stuff I didn't know about, and I knew a lot of stuff about Titanic. I was like Darlene. That has interested me since I was a very young person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are very few things that I take an interest in that hold my interest over decades. Yeah. One of them is the Titanic. Yes. Another and one is Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Like, I, there are not a lot of things. I get bored easily, and I move from one thing to another. And the unfortunate the thing The Titanic about... is one thing that... It's held my attention for many, many years. Just like the survivors have disappeared, below the waters now, there's not much left of it and it's not going to be around for much longer. Mm -hmm. It's rusting away at a very fast pace now. And now there are a lot of fantastic documentaries of actual underwater footage where they've gone down now in, in small submersibles, small submarines. And there are some fantastic pictures and, you know, check them out on... Yeah. Oh, they're all over yeah, the place. Yeah, you, you can find them on YouTube, you can find them on uh, the History Channel. The Documentary Channel, of, yeah. Titanic Channel, if yeah. you're lucky. And I believe it. You can get it everywhere. Yeah.
It's on LG, the, the Titanic channel is on LG. And no offense, the pet's not going to take up much space. They're not going to be as unruly as a... <laughs> Well, that's just my opinion anyways. You know what I think about children. You should eat more. Be careful more there. Be <laughs> careful there. Well, you know I'm a witch. You know I have a couple in the oven. Just wait. But anyways, let's talk about a rating system. Uh, good rating for a book that you like. <laughs> let's turn it again. Like a, like a, like a cat in the headlights. <laughs> A deer in the headlights. A dog in the headlights. Yes, there we go, like a dog in the headlights. That was the one for the blue purse. <laughs> I don't I'm know sorry. how many times we've done this already. <laughs> Remember? I don't know. All right. Okay, try again. So, thank you very much for joining us here at the Mojo Book Club. Thank you for coming out and sharing this awesome book. I like this book, White Star, what White a great Star, concept. White Star, A Dog on the Titanic by what Marty Chris. What a great concept. I didn't even know. So remember, subscribe, like and share with all your friends and all your enemies <laughs> and anybody else that you know. Hey, keep your sharing. Pets. Share them with your pets. Share with your do. dogs. And hit this little bell icon right here. So that you get a notification every time we have something new. And thank you very much for coming out, Darlene. And have yourself a smiley happy day, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>